And welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Binary Search. It's easy. Let's jump right into it. Given an array of integers nums, which is sorted in ascending order, and an integer target, write a function to search target in nums. If target exists, then return its index. Otherwise, return negative 1. You must write an algorithm with log of n runtime complexity. So we want to see if a given target exists in our input nums. If it does, we return its index, otherwise we return negative one. And we want to write this in log of n runtime complexity. So we want to do better than a linear scan, because one way to do this would just be to go through every single element in nums and see if any of those numbers matches target. However, if there are n elements in our input nums, that would be O of n time, but we want to do better than that. We want to do log of n runtime complexity, and this is going to be through a binary search which our title gives away. But anyways, before we get into that, let's take a look at some examples. So example one here, we have our input nums ranging from negative one to 12, and we wanna look for target nine. We do see it present in our input at index four, so we output four. Example two, we have an input nums, and we wanna look for two. It's not present in our input, so we would return negative one. And we have some constraints here. The main takeaways are every single integer in nums is unique and nums is sorted in ascending order. So actually, let's take a closer look at example two here, right? How do we know for sure that the target does not exist in our input nums? Well, all we really need to do is find two numbers where two should have been between. If it's not there, then we know it can't exist anywhere else in our array and we would output negative one. So we see 0 and 3 here, right? And the reason we can say that 2 does not exist is because it can't be to the left of 0. It's greater than 0 and it's sorted in ascending order. So it has to be to the right of 0. It has to be past 0. And it is less than 3. So 2 needs to come before 3. It needs to exist to the left of 3. So it needs to be to the left of 3 and to the right of 0, somewhere in between 0 and 3 but there's no number in the middle of zero and three. So we know for sure two does not exist because it can't exist anywhere else in our array. So what we wanna do is we wanna find bounds. We wanna find left and right bounds and just get them closer and closer to see where our target should be. If we find it, we would return its index. If not, we would return negative one. So let's start off like always with an example. Okay, so I have the following example right here. This is my input nums and my target is 12. And for visualization purposes, I've actually gone ahead and X out every single number in our input because we're not gonna be going through every single number. So we actually don't know every value in our input. So this is just for visualization purposes, but this is our actual input nums. So we wanna start off by finding our target in nums. And we want to do this by finding our bounds and just making them smaller every single time, like we did with example two. In the beginning, what are our bounds? We're going to have left and right bounds. So they're going to encompass the entire input nums, right? So my left is going to be index zero. So left would be index zero. And my right would be the last index, which would be length of nums minus one. And this would be inclusive. So my left is over here and my right is all the way at the end over here. And target would exist somewhere within these bounds if it does exist in our array. So now what do we want to do? We don't wanna go through every single number. So what I'm actually going to do is look for my midpoint. I'm gonna check the middle number and I'm gonna compare it against my target. Why am I doing this? Because again, to reiterate, nums is already sorted in ascending order. So what this is going to allow me to do is just make one check and based off of how it compares to target, I'll know which half to look in. I don't actually need to look for every single element. I just need to look for the half to look in. So for example, if my middle that I am looking for is greater than my target, so if middle is greater than my target. This means that my target exists lower than my middle. It exists in the first half where the lower numbers are 
And that is where I'm going to look for my target. I don't even need to check the second half that has bigger numbers. So I'm going to sort of adjust my bounds here. My right bound, my new max bound, so right would now change to be middle index minus one. I'm sort of shifting it to now check right below middle. And if the opposite were true, so if middle was less than my target, this means I know my target has to exist in the second half of the array, in the greater numbers, because my target is already greater than my middle number, and it's going to be greater than every single number lower than my middle because it's ordered in ascending order. So I know my target exists right after this middle index, somewhere between after this and to the end. So this means my left bound would now equal middle index plus one. And what happens if my middle is equivalent to my target? Well, I don't really have to do anything there. I would just return the index of that middle. So I would just return middle index. And I'm sort of just going to keep bringing in all of these bounds. In the end, if I don't find my target, I would just return negative one. So let's see how this plays out with our example up here. So I have my left and right bounds and I want to find the middle. So I'm going to do that is middle is going to equal left plus right. And I'm going to divide this right, R-I-G-H-T. I am going to divide this by two. This is going to be an integer division. So right now I start off with zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero plus six is six. Divide that by two is three. So I index three, which is zero, one, two, three. This is going to be my middle. Now I want to compare this to my target. So at this point, I know what its value would be because I'm actually checking it. So 15 is greater than my target, which means target lies somewhere lower than 15. So in this case, if middle is greater than my target, I'm going to move my right to be right under my middle. So right is now here. And I'm going to now make new checks with these two smaller bounds. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to make my new middle. So between zero and index two. So zero plus two is two. Divide that by two, we get one. My new middle is right here. And I'm going to see how it compares with target. So this is eight. 8 is less than my target of 12. So if it is less than my target, I readjust bounds. I'm going to make left, right after my middle. So right and left indices, like those bounds, are pointing to the same index right now. And I do this again, right? So 0, 1, 2, 2 plus 2, which is 4, divide that by 2. Middle is also going to point to my left and right bounds. They're all on one number, one index right now. Now I check this with target. This is actually equivalent to my target, so I would go ahead and return this index, which is index 2. And this is how we would solve it. If we had not found our middle here, then we would have gone ahead and returned negative 1. But what do we actually notice here, right? We didn't have to go through every single number in our input. We were just cutting our input in half every single time. So this is log base two time complexity. So this is a log n operation. We only made three checks, right? And we were able to find our target. We didn't even check what these numbers were. So this is how we're gonna do a binary search. We just cut it in half every single time and we see if our number would lie in either half of our new array. So let's go ahead and actually code up whatever we wrote here, this is sort of pseudocode. We're going to code all of this up and then go ahead and run through an example. Okay, so to code all of this up, I'm going to start off with my left and right bound. So that was actually just this over here. Um, let me move these down here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my left and right bound. So I'm going to have this be my first line over here. And I want to continue doing this logic up until my left and right bounds are sort of less than equal to each other. So while left is less than equal to right, I am going to continue bringing my bounds closer. If that's not the case anymore, I would exit out and return negative one, meaning we weren't able to return the index. So within this loop, what do I want to do? I want to find my middle index. So that's going to be middle index is going to equal left plus right divided by two. And I also want a corresponding middle value. So middle is going to be equal to nums at middle index. And I'm just going to move all of these 
in one to be within this while loop. So while left is less than equal to right, I find my middle and my middle index. If the middle value is greater than my target, I adjust my right bound. If it is less than my target, I adjust my left bound. If we find it equaling our target, we just return middle index. In the end, if we exit this while loop not returning, that means we never found our target and we would return negative one. So that's it. That is the code. Let's go ahead and run this. It is accepted and we can go ahead and submit. And it is accepted as well. So again, time complexity, this is a log of n runtime complexity. And for space, we're just iterating through our input nums, just keeping track of middle, left, and right. So that is constant O of 1 for space. Now let's quickly run through this example right here and just see what we're doing line by line for a binary search. So the first thing that we are going to do is start off with left equaling 0 and right equaling length of nums minus 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is going to be 5. So while left less than equal to right, which it is, we are going to find the middle index. So middle index is going to be left plus right integer divided by 2. So 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. We chop off whatever's after the 2 because we want the integer only. So this is going to be 2. And the value at index 2 is 0, 1, 2, 3. So right now our left is here, our right is here, and our middle is index 2 right here. Now we want to compare the middle to our target. We see that middle is greater than our target, so we enter this if condition and we move right to be right under this middle. So right is now going to be right under our middle, which means right updates to middle index minus 1, which is 1. And we go back into this while loop. We don't do any of the other if conditions because these are all elif. So if this isn't true, then we go into this. And if this, both of these aren't true, only then do we go into this. Otherwise, we skip everything else. So we're back in this while loop, and we see that left is still less than equal to right. And we find our new middle. So middle index is going to be left plus right integer divided by 2. So 1 divided by 2, that's just going to be index 0. And what is the value at index 0? That is negative 1. So our middle is equal to this left right here. And now we want to compare it to target. Middle is not greater than target. Middle is less than our target. So now we want to move left to be middle plus one. So we're moving left to be middle plus one right over here. And left is going to equal index one. So now we are back in this while loop while left less than equal to right, which it is both are one. We find our new middle. So middle index is just going to be one plus one divided by two, which is one. And the value here would be zero. So now M is also at index one as R, R and L. So all our bounds are at index one as is our middle. Now we compare is middle greater than our target. Zero is not greater than our target, so we go into this elif condition. Middle is less than our target. Our middle right now is valued to zero. Zero is less than two. So we are in this condition, and we set left to be right after our middle index. So left is now two, and we've moved this up over here. We are back in our while loop, and we see that our while condition no longer holds true. Left is not less than equal to right. It is greater than right, so we break and we return negative 1, meaning we never found our target 2, which is true. We never find it, and so we would return negative 1. And you can see how we sort of moved our bounds, and we, when we couldn't find our number in the middle, we returned negative 1. So this is how we are going to do a binary search. We just take our nums cut it in half and look for our target. If we don't find it, we return negative one. If we find it, we return our index. If you have any questions at all, as always, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.